Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And I know there's lots of questions today on this article, mainly because it was poorly written. And the reason why I say that is because I think they were trying to decipher a tweet by Giant Gox, who is the Hodor of the Japanese community. And all they could see was SBI, FX, and XRP, and they went on to say that SBI FX trade was going to start handling XRP in August 2020. Well, what does that mean? Handling, it's just utter vagueness. Well, let me shed some light on that. What they were really talking about, and I just don't think they knew, is this is all about a derivative. And the derivative is a CFD, a contract for differences. And if we go to the slide that was put out on the 30th of July for the investors, on page 31 of 159 pages, you can see that it talks about this synergy, which Mr. Kitao has been really working on to really leverage off all of his different properties and companies. And this is some synergy that is occurring between SBI BC Trade and the market maker B2C2. And that was a big investment that he has made into that UK market maker. And we should also expect more innovative financial services outside the field of crypto with this uh, collaborative investment. So what you, what you do know now is that the CFD will be traded on the FX trade site. And if you're really wanting to be an expert, let me just play this video for you really quick. And I think you will be an expert on CFDs. A contract for differences or CFD is an agreement between an investor and a provider to exchange the difference in value of a financial product between the time the contract opens and closes. The investor never actually owns the underlying asset, but rather receives revenue based on the market changes of that asset. If the asset's value rises, he'll receive a profit. If it decreases, he takes a loss. Essentially, the investor is predicting performance. Sarah believes stock A is going to rise. She decides to enter into a contract with a CFD broker. She agrees to buy 100 shares of stock A at $10 a share. The CFD broker requires Sarah pay only 5% to enter the contract, so she pays $50. As Sarah expected, stock A increases in value. On closing day, she sells it and pockets the difference in value as profit. The advantages to CFDs include access to the underlying asset at a smaller financial commitment than buying the stock outright. They also provide access to a variety of global markets and indices, lower fees, ease of execution, and the flexibility to go long, buy, or short, sell. Disadvantages include market risk, which grows amid volatility, and when entering a CFD, the investor's initial position is reduced by the size of the spread, the difference between the asset's ask and bid prices, which can trim profits. So, I think they did a great job of explaining it. I couldn't do such a great job in a short period of time. And really the news here is that SBI VC Trade, which is affiliated with the SBI FX Trade site, they are getting brutally competitive. So as of the 24th, the FX site is going to reduce their fees to zero. So those trades which had spreads that ranged from five cents to 30 cents are now all down to zero on the US to Japanese yen. You can see the British pound pair, the Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, the Canadian dollar, the Chinese yuan, the South African ron, the Turkish lira and the Hong Kong dollar. Unbelievable, so you know, it already is the number one FX trade site in Japan, but now how can anybody compete with that? And here, I think everybody knows that these are the court papers, and this is the reply uh, of motion to dismiss the consolidated complaints against Ripple in regards to proving those points like XRP's lack of utility, etc. And it was to be heard at 9 a.m. on August 26 in California. And everybody is just waiting, I think, on pins and needles to see if there is any 
news uh, on this at all. And all I could find really at the time of this video was just the signed consolidated approval of the two cases together shown with the stamp from Judge Phyllis J. Hamilton. And you can see that it was on August 21st. And if I take you to the PACER monitor website, this is something that updates periodically and it does show any um, docket update. And again, as of this video, at the time I'm recording, recording it, the last update was that one I just showed you from Friday, August 21st, so nothing yet. And I just thought maybe somebody possibly would be sitting in on the hearing if it was open, but no, I don't think that was the case. And I think we're only gonna have to wait a few more hours and when that information gets out, surely it's going to be throughout the entire media, no doubt. So moving along to this, have you ever seen the Netflix series called Black Mirror? And did you see the episode Nosedive? It's set in a world where people rate each other from one to five with stars for every in interaction that you have. And should you have a low social score, well, then certain privileges were not given to you, like being able to book a flight or rent a car. And so it was kind of unreal and really left a creepy feeling for how the world may go. But it is very close to how the world is going. And this is some news that came out from China on August 24th. It's the launch of the People's Chain Global Data Governance Sharing Platform, an app. <laughs> it uses big data, blockchain, and AI as a super ID. It's a digital identity system which integrates your social media reputation to help enterprise businesses assess your, the risk or credit for financing. No, thank you. Wow. No, thank you. All right, I'm moving to a Twitter storm. <laughs> this is Alex Saunders. I'm sure he's a great guy. In fact, I like him. I like his channel. But when he tweeted this out, I just thought that this was just baiting the XRP community a little bit. So we know that Consensus acquired the JP Morgan's quorum blockchain. And he went on to say, let's see how the XRP army spins this as good for XRP and how they still need Ripple for XYZ. I don't think that was necessary. Uh, to put that in there because it feels a little snarky to me. And so I did um, give him a series of tweets. I probably would get a very low social score <laughs> for that, for the way I responded. But I guess I feel like you don't need to add those kind of comments. So in the four replies, I reminded him that XRP clearly is something that is a bridge currency and it is a complement to stable coins and CBDCs. I, I think so many people have tried to explain to him what the utility and value is of XRP. So I, 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 I find myself a little speechless, confused. So we know that it doesn't compete. This is a recent statement that has uh, come from Emi Yoshikawa, but there are tons of times we've heard lots of people um, from the Ripple camp and also in the Inthanon study, which takes place between Hong Kong and Thailand, they did the CBDCs and they found that there was a big problem in the settlement because of the the FX, they didn't have a bridge currency. So anyway, um, 
I still think a lot of people just don't get that portion. And also too, XRP eliminates the money that's parked all over the world for the Nostro accounts when it comes to the correspondent banking models. And so I think it's just also people don't understand how correspondent banking works. And the biggest thing actually for, for me is that Quorum is just not scalable. And I brought to him this particular study, which is very reputable. And the maximum achievable load on that system can only be like 900 transactions per second, which is when the system starts to fail and it can't reach consensus. And I feel, you know, a little bit better that I'm not alone in, in trying to make my point because today Cointelegraph reports that the um, JP Morgan blockchain creator said that the project was going nowhere and that nothing built on Ethereum is capable of scaling. <laughs> so I, I don't think you can compare apples to oranges here. He goes on to say that uh, when they did buy this or made this investment to, to acquire uh, the Quorum blockchain, Consensus, from his point of view, is mostly trying to buy a brand and being able to just use the Quorum trademark and intellectual asset, from his point of view, is part of the marketing. But the real issue with Quorum is that it just does not scale. So I don't know, maybe they'd be able to fix it. But I think that when you ask me, how do I spin it? Uh, I spin it as this is an apple and we've got oranges. All right, everybody, I'm jumping to the fluff. Uh, look at this cute little iron. It's for real. It's a mini iron and it has been created to travel with. And it does work. It gets really nice and hot. And you can get those wrinkles out of your shirt or out of your pants from packing. And it is tiny. But the reviews say that it really does work. And it only sells for about $10 US. Mini iron. So cute. I love it. And then the other thing is that when you go to the ancient capital in Japan called Nara, they have for hundreds of years uh, allowed these deer to mingle with the people and they feel very confident. They have grown up for, you know, all of these years around people. So they're very, very tame. And this is one of those pictures during cherry blossom season that are always so popular. But recently, like in the last week, these deer are in very strange places. <laughs> They're trying to escape the heat. It has been close to 100 degrees for the last week. And they found that these little water ways, these water ditches, are cool. Even if it is just a couple of degrees, it's a difference that is bringing them in herds to sit in these ditches which is a first they really hadn't they really haven't seen the deer do this before so i think that's quite kind of interesting but if you go back in time this is something that was from 1791 the people have been mingling with these deer in nara for all this time and what has happened is they have picked up on a very very unique, strange habit, and that is to bow. Because the people would bow to them, and the deer then, kind of mimicking what they saw, would bow, and the people would give them a treat. And now those treats come in the form of biscuits made specially for the deer, so it doesn't get them sick. But they bow like you can't believe. Maybe you've seen it before, but all of the deer growing up around people bowing and then getting a treat, they just don't stop 
bowing because they want treats. So you can take a look here. <laughs> those are one of those biscuits. Very polite. Very polite. <laughs> anyway, kind of fun. All right, everybody. Yes, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.